Ah, 2011. Good times. Good, good, good times. Unfortunately, none of them involved WWE. Because WWE in 2011 was pretty bad. Terrible. Awful. Horrible. Uh, a year full of missed opportunities. A year full of terrible booking. A year full of stupidity. A year full of typical Vince McMahon. And Breakfast Club Always Wins. And, you know, PG era BS. That's how I describe 2011. And the 2011 Royal Rumble kicked the year off in grand style. My God, I hate this show. I hate this show so much. When you when you look at when you look back at 2011, you look at all the big four pay per views, and none of them were good. Some may make the argument that the Survivor Series was good. No, just just I don't want to go there. Um, just a disappointing year, and Royal Rumble 2011 was a disappointing show that unfortunately started the build to a disappointing WrestleMania. Uh, 2011 Royal Rumble, you only had four matches on the card, which as I talked about in previous videos, uh, the Royal Rumble pay-per-view usually has, uh, four, five, sometimes six matches on the card because you have the Royal Rumble match and this year because you had 40 superstars uh, you only had four matches on the card whatever the case may be you kicked off with the world title match Edge versus Dolph Ziggler what made this match kind of bad and kind of forgettable was you had no no belief there was no belief whatsoever that Dolph Ziggler was actually going to win. It was going to be Edge, and this feud wasn't really a huge fan of it, didn't really do much to get Dolph Ziggler over in a big way. Um, I didn't really like Dolph Ziggler's association with Vicky Guerrero because I thought it was more about building up her, uh, or excuse me, building her up as a manager rather than building him up as a wrestler. Um, wasn't a big fan of them, wasn't a big fan of this match. Uh, unfortunately, it was one of Edge's last matches, so I do have to kind of look at it like that, too. Um, but nothing really to write home about. And then WWE, the WWE Championship match. Randy Orton versus The Miz. And at the time, I was a huge Miz mark, and I still am to this day. Because The Miz does something that heels today uh, forget how to do. Uh, and that is to get the crowd to not like you. That's their job. That's their role. And in 2011, when Miz was WWE champion, I thought he was white hot. And, you know, you had Alex Riley there, a good choice for a manager. Kind of got him over in a big way. Um, he's facing off against Randy Orton. Uh, had a little bit of fear uh, that Randy Orton wasn't going to do business the right way. Ultimately... He did not do business the right way. What a surprise. Breakfast Club always wins. <laughs> um, Miz does go over, but it's in a cheap way. Uh, it's via shenanigans. It's via the Nexus. Um, because, again, instead of trying to get your WWE champion over, instead of trying to get the challenger over, instead of trying to get the match over, you decide to get the Nexus over. Uh, the Nexus, who in a month's time, uh, would no longer exist. Yeah, that's what we decide to do with our WWE Championship match at a Big Four pay-per-view. Yep, WWE in 2011. Uh, then you get a Women's Championship match that I, I don't even remember who was in it, so I'm just going to move on. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then we get to the biggest Royal Rumble match in history. Or as I like to call it, one of the biggest wastes of time in history. Because you had 40 guys. And unfortunately, when you have 40 guys, that means you have a lot of downtime in the Rumble match. Because you have a lot of jobbers, uh, guys that have no business being in any sort of Royal Rumble match, or any sort of big marquee match at a pay-per-view, let alone a big four pay-per-view. Um, and you got that here. 
You know, you had a, a long dominant run of the Nexus, which I guess was okay. But at the same time, it just went on for way too long. And ultimately, once John Cena came out, you knew which direction they were going. He cleared house on Nexus. And then after John Cena came in, and then of all people, of course, of course, because the WWE is high on their midgets, uh, you had Hornswoggle come out. Uh, again, another period of downtime where it was just jobbers um, until you got to some more action. Uh, ultimately, yes, this Royal Rumble match did set up some WrestleMania matches. It did set up John Cena versus The Miz, which is good. Um, it did set up Alberto Del Rio uh, going into Mania in a world championship match, which again is good, trying to establish a new star. Unfortunately, I was never a big fan of Alberto Del Rio winning the Royal Rumble, and I really wasn't a fan of him in 2011. And I wasn't a fan of how the WWE decided to just force him. He, it reminded me a lot of the early years of Randy Orton, when within two years he was already world champion, even though he was nowhere near ready. Well, well here, Alberto Del Rio, same thing. You know, you had a couple of months of good stuff from Alberto Del Rio, but you never had a marquee match or a signature moment or, you know, something that puts this guy in the world title picture. And here he is winning the biggest Royal Rumble match of all time. I don't know. I don't think he was ready for it. Unfortunately, it led to a disappointing Mania match. Uh, it led to him kicking off the show with Edge. I know that was done for a different reason, but whatever. It's whatever. It's, you know, he still kicked off the show. Um, then it led to him winning Money in the Bank and then him winning the championship. You know, he did all of this within six months and it was just stupid. And I think this pay-per-view was stupid. I'm sorry, but it was. And WWE in 2011 was stupid. 